is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. Who else is here? With my cohort. Krieger Marjorie One. And if you enjoyed this review and any of, any of our other content, be sure to like this video and any other videos. Share with your friends. Sub to us. Get our names out. We love to share our thoughts with the world. It looks like the movie that we decided to review in this one was Jurassic Park 2, a.k.a. The Lost World Jurassic Park, a.k.a. Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Before we get into, I guess, the synopsis and our thoughts, what are the numbers, Krieger? So, this movie, Jurassic Park so far, the first movie made a bun bunch of money and this one followed. Um, the budget for this movie was $73 million. Their box office was $618.6 million. Jeez. So they netted a shit ton of money. Um, however, it has not been reviewed as highly. Um, critics have rated this film a 5.3 and audience with this was a 5.1. I could probably maybe put some, I guess, reasoning behind that. Because I have done a lot of like research on the Jurassic Park series over time. I'm going to do some more heavy research in the next one. but um, So tell us about the plot. Well, I was going to say about the numbers real quick. Um, it's well known by a good number of people that for some reason they didn't like the idea of the T-Rex in San Francisco or in a city that's environment. One, that's one of my favorite parts. Like, there's a lot of people out there that don't like this movie for that reason. The synopsis, um, basically, uh, with the knowledge of Site 2, is La Sorna. Malcolm gets sent by Hammond to go observe and document the dinosaurs, while he's also on a rescue mission to save his girly friend from the dinosaurs before Hammond's financiers get there to you know, do bad, illegal things that they shouldn't do. And to set the tone, so the island from the first one was it, it, it was Sorna? No, first, the, uh, the first one was Isla Nubar. Okay, now this one is the five deaths. This one's Sorna. A chain of islands that yeah. are totally, completely separate from that. There's five islands. The three I can come off the top of my head is Nublar. That's the first film. Sorna is this film. And then there's Nikta, I remember from like some of my knowledge. But there's the other two. I don't remember their names. But this one is set in Sorna. Do you want me to do random facts before we go to opinions? Yeah, do some random facts before we get into our opinions. Because there's a quite a bit I want to share about this movie. So, my three random facts. I won't talk about the botchings other than... One, the one botch that we were just dis discussing the islands um, the, the island from the first one is supposed to be 80 miles off the coast from this one mm -hmm. um, but they show a map at one point and it's there's no island within hundreds of miles of where that's at so that's a goof I'm sure it wasn't like Flint no. it was, well, I don't know which but it, it, oh well it, yeah. it's supposed to be 80 Anyways, miles off so comparing the two movies uh, number one um, this movie had approximately 50% more dino action than the first one. Oh, yeah. Do you want to take a guess w what animal was making the sound effect for the baby T-Rex when it was crying out for its mom? Oh, fuck. Um, I, actually, I remembered seeing this, but I don't... I can't remember. I, I can't remember. I remember actually knowing about it at some point, but I don't remember right now. It's, it was, a, it's a camel. That's, that's clicking. That's clicking in my head right now. I remember now. And then my final little cool trivia thing is they actually reuse most of this place took place in a certain area, but they use certain scenes from this movie in the same filming area where they they filmed Star Wars: Return of the Jedi and indoor scenes. My one quote for this film was um, after somebody had said that somebody had died, the hunter said, "Then his troubles are over." I'm always back and forth on this movie. Some days, I love this movie. Some days, I don't like this movie. I think it's just because I always find something I don't like about it, and then I turn around and think, oh, there's all oh, this good shit about it. The intro scene with the copies and the, the child going into the transition from the mother to Malcolm yawning, all, that all whole scene there was just... loved it. Like, like, it was probably, like you said, probably one of the best intros to a Jurassic Park film, plus with the hilarious transition... <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum just standing yawning, in front of a poster, yawning by in front of a fucking poster at a subway. I thought it was interesting to continue this next story with Malcolm's character with no Alan Grant anywhere in sight, because with the two books they keep all the characters together and everything and whatnot. And Grant work. Grant's more the main character in the books and everything, but I think it was because. Um, the actor for Alan Grant was busy at the time and whatnot, or 
the main complaint I've heard about people complain about this movie is the fact that it felt like more of a side movie that did, didn't matter. Yeah. That, because it didn't have a main character. Yeah, that could be it and everything. Okay, I'm going to kind of bunch this together. The Stegosaurus is... Uh, the Rexes, the, the, the cinematography, some of the animatronics. Some, some CGI bits looked a little iffy to me. But yeah, over the time. overall, overall, like I know for, for the time period, but overall, it just it looked like still looked like on par with the original film, and I just it was beautiful, especially the scene where they're all in the grass and there's like those six raptors just charging in those little like comparing the CGI in this film to another film we reviewed, the 1998 um, Godzilla film. Please don't remind me of that film. It's been almost a year since the, we even talked about that movie. <laughs> The Hunter, Roland, this is probably my favorite character in the movie. I feel like I'm not the only one in this argument that would say this. He, I, okay, his character is done very well and everything. And it's funny because the actor who plays him plays one of the prisoners in Alien 3. And you always think about that and you're like, fuck! He usually plays psychopath, like people who say, I've got crazy bad guys in prisons. But he plays a really good, like, sophisticated, smart, intelligent hunter guy in this film, which, like, throws you off, like, completely off guard if you've seen his previous work and everything. Who is an excellent hunter, except in, uh, he never took a hunter safety course. This film did have an introduction scene for Roland, and it actually showed more of, like, his character. It made him into more look like a bad guy. But obviously they cut it due to time constraints and everything. And we just got the little leaf reveal like, oh, it's him. I think he had the best character development in this film. Because he starts out as this like mean, like bad asshole. And then he's like, I'm not going to work for this company anymore. I've lost too many people. I've got my goal, but at what cost? Like, it, it's not worth it anymore. Granted, this film like just takes it and just crushes his development like down to just like 15 minutes and that's what hurts his character is that his development like chopped up and crunched down but if it was spread out more and stretched out that is i feel like it would have been perfect i think i really liked the hunter in this film the darting trank setup for the vehicles when they were first getting like the the parasaurs and the quarries where they, they, they kind of like shot up the side and everything like the goddamn sight cart from the 60s batman movie it looked kind of jank. <laughs> it looked jank as fuck. Financiers wanted to take the dinos out of the island to San Diego to make their own park in the middle of the fucking city. Like, that's, that's simple, easy, bad guy bullshit, but that's fucking stupid. I mean, if you've got the right dinosaurs, you could definitely do that. Yes, it's but not the, a T-Rex. they're wanting to get T-Rexes. Why? They could get Apaches. Just have a herbivore. A herbivore. Oh. Nick, I love Nick's character in this film, but I thought it was very stupid of him to actually bring the baby Rex back to nurse it back to health, and that just endangered everyone else in the camp. I know he has a heart and everything, but I, I, that's that's too risky in my opinion. Um, the McDonald's ad online with them talking about cheeseburgers and shit. That was a fucking ad online because they were having a McDonald's. Also, thing for the Mercedes time. Benz that, the, that they were driving to run over away from the T-Rex, they actually gifted that to you know, Goldblum, and he drove that as a, as a regular vehicle as of up until 2012. I kind of felt like the Raptors in, in this film were not very... Like, they were smart when they wanted to be, and they had moments where they were just completely dumb. Like, plot armor stupid, and it just... It didn't really fit like how the Raptors were portrayed in the first film. Like, they let simple, corny stuff just take them out. Like, fucking gymnastics backflip kick through a window and then Friday the 13th Part 5 landed on a fucking stake and killed it. The iconic cliff scene, that's the scene I remember the most in this film from when the RV gets knocked off the cliff to Eddie coming to saving them to Eddie being in danger from the Rexes mm. to the Rexes killing Eddie while he was saving the rest of the group. And my last positive is the, the shot of the Rex with the San Diego like city line was great. I loved it. It was I loved that shot right there and everything. And like the idea of having a Rex in the city is good. I like the idea. It's interesting. It's 
basically is what would happen if shit went hit the fan. That would happen. Like it's and as far as creatures in the city, I feel like they did a better job with the T Rex being in the city than Predator did in the city. That is my thoughts. Overall thoughts. Time for my thoughts. So I crossed off a couple things that we had already discussed. Yes. On my positives, such as the hunter, um, how different it was, and it had a really good opening. So here are some of the points that I thought was good about it. Number one, it, it was intense. By, by by intense, I mean the this bus hanging off the side of the cliff. Don't know if the glass is going to shatter or not. That was like really intense, and that's one of my favorite scenes in the entire trilogy. I'm glad you went in depth into that. I just kind of grazed over it. <laughs> I was yeah, hoping like, you would get in depth over like, it. And you're just like, oh my god, what's going to happen? That's one of those I just remember like grinding my teeth at. Nail biting and everything. Um, cast was excellent across the board between good old Vince Vaughn. Which, by the way, Vince Vaughn, you know how he was recruited from this. Mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg had uh, other obligations and he saw he had to go to an early screening or like a uh, thing for um, Swingers two years before this. And he said, I want this guy for my movie. They kept a lot of the good themes that we're going to continue to see throughout the series. Number one was the coward trope, where you see some guy who had a choice to do something right, and he was a coward, and he got killed in the rain. Um, so the guy in the vehicle who left the chick up there all by himself. Even, even though he kind of redeemed himself by pretty much saving them, he was shitty. I compared the, his coward uh, trope with two of the people from the first one. Number one, Neji. the guy... The, the one, yeah, Neji, and then the, uh, the guy who chose to go shit on the toilet instead of stay with the kids. And then there's always the bad guys that are trying to use them as weapons, and then it always backfires. Weapons are park attractions, and this one it was like park attractions. Some way to profit on their own. Um, they had cool, cool, subtle callbacks to the first one. Whenever Hammond was, was like talking to them, he still had his goddamn cane that had the... Mosquito and the um, ember and whatnot. The boat crash was really cool and unique. Um, I did have a problem with the boat crash, though. Is the T-Rex supposed to be the only dinosaur that was on there? The Rex and the infant. Well, no, 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 not, not the infant. Uh, just, just the the buck, the buck Rex. Yes. Yeah. So how did he eat the person in the cabin? You know. When he was stuck in the know, cargo. I actually never went over that. Um. That's a good question. <laughs> it that's doesn't a, make that's it. That's a good question. <laughs> he can apparently fucking teleport. Maybe he just has a really long tongue and he just tongued the piece of people down there. Best uh, outro music of any series. It's always, the, the Jurassic Park thing is always great. Now, those are all my positives. Now, as my negatives hit, the CGI is fucking terrible in this film. It's awful, terrible, super bad at all times. Um, but, at the time, that's a standard for all CGI to be bad. So I don't take too, off too much points for it, but it does have a negative. The explosions are really terrible on unrealistic. Remember that really intense scene that we were talking about how the thing was falling off the side of the cliff when it fell on the bottom of the side of the cliff? Mm-hmm. It was unrealistic explosions and then bad CGI combined with that to have stuff barely miss them. Yeah. You were, I remember you were specifically like, oh man, that was so close. And I was like, yeah, if that well, would have looked realistic, it would have been it, so much better. Yeah, I, I was saying it was really close, but at the same time, it looked like they were trying to go for shitty 3D effects too. Yeah, which it, 3D wasn't even a thought at this time. Um,. Gun safety. That motherfucking hunter that's supposed to be a badass flung that goddamn shotgun over his back, over his fucking shoulder, and aimed it at every single person throughout like several different scenes. And but then he lay it down face upward because he's a big fancy gay safe. Also, logic wise on that gun, that gun can't kill a T Rex. I don't know why he thought an elephant gun was going to affect a T Rex unless it's like knocked out and then he puts it right to his brain. Then it might hurt the T Rex, but. The T-Rex brains are so small, it'd be pretty hard to kill them. <laughs> um, why did we only see birds in the very last scene? Why, the pterodons? Were, yeah, where are they conveniently at the... Yeah, the, the the and like, island? I mean, the, I, there's something I want to complain about the pterodons, but we have to watch the third film for me to like to see that, so I'm going to make a note of that. For um, and and my, my next thing is Ingen, I-N-G-E-N, the name of the company. Was that company named in the first one at all? I feel like the name Yay. engine was just introduced. Yay. Michael pauses and edits. 
I have a message from this film. No matter how much money you put into a goal, if it's destined to fail, it will fail. Um, nature will find a way. I like this movie. It gets a lot of hate that I feel like it shouldn't get. The direction they went was a little weird. But fun. Kind of the, the typical cheesy bad guy trying to run a park in the middle of the city with creatures that shouldn't exist. But for a follow-up movie, even though it's viewed as a side film, and that's why it's not called Jurassic Park 2, even though it, it, it Jurassic Park 3, uh, I will say that this film for me is a solid eight and a half. I like this film. It's not a perfect film by any means, but there is a lot of stuff in this film that are very strong, very solid, that makes this film a good watch. One of them being Roland. <laughs> I wish this film was like an hour longer so we can get more character development of him. And there is rumored to be like, if I remember right, there was like at least an hour and a half of footage just cut from the movie. Because I went back, because watching this now, I'm now realizing that it looked kind of chopped up, but not like a refined, like a refined chopped up movie, if that makes sense. Like you can tell some scenes are just kind of like, okay, now we're here now. But it was refined enough to make it look like a decent film, but I, there was a lot on the cutting room floor that got cut from the film and destroyed. There was also stuff that was added in later, because, like, there was a couple things I was reading about, how Steven Spielberg, like, wanted to save it for a third film, but then he was like, oh, I'm probably not going to direct a third film, so I'm just going to add stuff in. Um, because st if you, I, this wasn't mentioned, but this is one of the very few ones where Spielberg will go back and make a sequel film. He doesn't really like doing that. So yeah, that and he probably didn't like the reception it got. And, and like wise. when he was first making the film, he was super excited about it, and he did several interviews, and he was talking about how kind of bored he was getting with the film as it was going on. So he just kind of wanted yeah. to finish it. I mean, I, could, I, I can kind of see that vibe, too, by the end of the film, because it's, like, a really good, compelling story in the very beginning, and then once you get to the city, it's just, like, done. <laughs> but my rating is an 8.5. I, I, I like this movie. My rating of this film individually is a 9.2, um, which is almost damn double what they fucking, the audience did. I don't know why the audience and critics shit on this film so much. I already, I mean, it's... It's, it's kind of like a side film. It's explained, like... It's a side film. Side film, it's in the city, people but don't like the idea. I love the idea. I love the idea, and I, this is one of my favorite ones. It's probably, up to this point, I like this one better than the original one. I feel like it's more original, like originality idea, I think. Yeah, and it's way more fun and interesting. I feel like it's paced much better. That makes um, sense, because the book... I'm sorry to interrupt again, but the book follows, like, the two books, I think they stay on the island for the most part. They get some of the dinosaurs in, in, inland, but I think at the very end, it ends in on the new block and everything and whatnot with all the dinosaurs and everything. So this is kind of like a, a rip of the second book. Inspired, with, not a rip. Well, it's, I'm sorry. It's inspired by some things, oh, and I say some things, I mean very few things from the second book, and a lot of originality. My experience with this movie was I watched the first one, and I watched the third, well, I watched the third one, then I watched the first one, and then it wasn't until years later that I watched the second one. I was like, whoa, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Uh, he got his own movie, and it was better? Hell yeah. I, I, and I'm sure there's probably a bunch of people that are fan-hating on me for saying that this one's better than the original one. He's like, oh, no, the original one's the best. Okay, this one was filmed on the Endor moon. Moon of Endor. <laughs> Star Wars fans, here you go. And, and follow us next time when we watch the greatest movie of the franchise. Or in all reality, we go back to Isla Sorna and we realize... We shouldn't have gone back to Isla Sorna. We have to go back! Next time you see us for this Jurassic Park series, we'll be reviewing Jurassic Park 3. And as much as I despise this film for my own personal reasons, I will critically review it the best I can. He's going to be rating it a 10 out of 10, as will I. Nope. This is Mike Check 95 along with Creaker Margin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can bet our bottom dollar we're going to be watching Jurassic Park 3 next time you see us.
Thank you.